Supervolcanoes form over hot spots or in subduction zones, where tectonic plates collide. These areas allow magma to pool in the Earth's interior. Over tens of thousands to millions of years, pressure builds as the magma interacts with surrounding rocks, becoming more viscous and gas-rich. David Pyle, a volcanologist at the University of Oxford, explains, it's the combination of the magma's high viscosity and gas content that makes supervolcanoes so explosive. When they erupt, they're like popping a bottle of champagne on a planetary scale. Yellowstone is a focal point for supervolcano research. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO, run by the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, continues to monitor the area. Researchers use a combination of seismographs, satellite imagery, and GPS sensors to track ground deformation, which can indicate magma movement. In the latest study led by Dr. Michael Poland, the scientist in charge of YVO, the researchers analyzed 20 years of data on Yellowstone's uplift. The results, published in GGR Solid Earth, suggest periodic cycles of inflation and deflation, likely driven by migration of magma and hydrothermal fluids. Yellowstone is dynamic but not currently erupting, Poland notes. Our data suggests that the magma is being recharged, but at a much slower rate than would be required for an imminent eruption. At Toba, the University of Cambridge team used zircon crystals found in volcanic deposits to study the accumulation of magma. Dr. Clive Oppenheimer, a volcanologist on the team, explains, Zircons are like time capsules. They tell us how long the magma has been sitting and evolving before it erupted. At Toba, it took thousands of years, which is consistent with what we see at other supervolcanoes. Supervolcanoes don't erupt often, but when they do, the results are devastating. An eruption like Yellowstone's last major one, the Lava Creek eruption 640,000 years ago, would have buried the western U.S. in meters of ash, destroyed infrastructure, and rendered much of the land uninhabitable. Globally, the consequences would go far beyond ashfall. Ash clouds would block sunlight, triggering a, quote, volcanic winter. Crops would fail, leading to food shortages. The cooling effects could last for years, disrupting weather patterns and ecosystems. The Toba eruption provides a glimpse of these impacts, Studies of ice cores and sediments suggest that the eruption caused a significant drop in global temperatures, potentially reducing the human population to as few as 10,000 individuals, a genetic bottleneck that shaped our evolution. Yellowstone's volcanic plumbing is a complex network of magma reservoirs some partially melted and others frozen. Recent research suggests that the shallowest magma chambers are about 5 to 15 percent melted. While this does not indicate an eruption is imminent, it does underscore the potential for future activity. Jacob Lowenstern, a geologist formerly with YVO, emphasizes, the goal is not to predict the next eruption, but to understand the system well enough to mitigate the risk. Locally, a Yellowstone eruption would wipe out everything within a 100-kilometer radius. Ashfall would extend for thousands of kilometers, with the heaviest deposits in neighboring states such as Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming. Globally, a volcanic winter could drop temperatures by several degrees Celsius for a decade. Atmospheric scientist Alan Robach of Rutgers University has modeled the scenario in climate models. He warns, the food supply chains we depend on are vulnerable. A volcanic winter could lead to widespread famine even in areas far from the eruption. The role of science in risk mitigation technological advances are improving our ability to monitor supervolcanoes. AI is being used to analyze seismic data for early warning signs, 
while satellite imagery is providing real-time views of ground deformation. Understanding these systems can also inform geothermal energy projects, such as harnessing Yellowstone's abundant heat for sustainable electricity. In addition, international collaboration is essential. The Global Volcanism Program collects data from observatories around the world, encouraging a comprehensive monitoring approach. Studying supervolcanoes isn't just about predicting the next eruption. It's about understanding Earth's dynamic processes and the interactions between geology, climate, and life. As Pyle notes, supervolcanoes remind us of the incredible power and vulnerability of our planet. Studying them is a humbling but essential endeavor. In the long term, research can help policymakers develop more robust disaster preparedness plans, from ash cleanup strategies to food security measures during prolonged global cooling. Supervolcanoes aren't just relics of Earth's past, they're active evolving systems that demand our respect and vigilance. One of the most widely discussed approaches is to reduce the heat in a supervolcano's magma chamber. The concept is particularly relevant to Yellowstone, where researchers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory have proposed a plan to use water to cool the magma and lower the risk of an eruption. The proposal involves drilling into the supervolcano's crust and injecting water, which would circulate, absorb heat, and return to the surface as steam. This geothermal system could slowly cool the magma chamber over tens of thousands of years, potentially delaying or even preventing an eruption. Dr. Brian Wilcox, a former NASA engineer, explained the concept in an interview. By cooling the magma chamber, we can reduce its energy. If we do it gradually, we can stabilize the system safely and even harness geothermal power as a byproduct. The approach is not without risks, however. Drilling into the magma chamber could potentially destabilize the system, triggering the very eruption that scientists are trying to prevent. The margin for error is very narrow, Wilcox warns. Another idea being explored is to reduce the pressure inside the magma chamber by creating a controlled vent. This approach, similar to letting steam out of a pressure cooker, would involve drilling a borehole into the chamber to gradually release gas and magma. Dr. Christopher Kilburn, a volcanologist at University College London, stresses the challenges. The concept of venting a volcano is scientifically sound, but the logistical and safety issues are mind-boggling. The last thing we want is to accidentally trigger an eruption.